Thank you very much. And I call on Alec Rowley. Thank you, President Officer. The, the Cabinet Secretary is saying that it would be impossible to be able to set up some kind of national negotiation for terms, conditions and pay for, for private sector workers. But I do remind them that it was indeed John Swinney, when he was the Finance Secretary working with COSLA, that came along and introduced a national rate for all care providers. Up until that point, local authorities would negotiate rates locally and that was ending up in some type of chaos. So, so, so a national rate for care home owners was introduced to try and stabilise the sector a bit. So I think, I think he, is, he is making an excuse that does not stack up in terms of trying to look at this. But the truth is, and surely, surely if, there's, if there's one thing that's absolutely evident out of this crisis, it is that the way that we organise and the way that we deliver and run social care, health and social care, and care homes and in the community is just not fit for purpose. And this is an opportunity to start to address that. I've, I'd, I've, I have for some time, I, I've never forgotten when my, my, my dad was ill before he died. He had a full care package, four visits a day uh, by different carers. Some of those carers that came in from the council and some of the care was provided through uh, agencies, through the private sector. And the care of all the carers was absolutely first class. The only difference is those that were working for the council had far better terms and conditions and pay than those that worked for the private sector. I, I think it is very important to stress, I do not disagree with a word that Mr. Rowley said. But I do not believe, I strongly do not believe, that you can achieve a imposition of national terms and conditions by the means of six to eight lines in an emergency. Mr. Russell, can you move your microphone? Thank you. Sorry, Presiding Officer. I, I was making the point that I do not disagree or, 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 or differ a word from what Mr. Rowley has said. But I do not believe that you can actually establish national terms and conditions by the means of eight to ten lines in an emergency bill. We want this to happen. Uh, you know, we want it to happen, but it can't happen as a result of what we have heard today. We are working towards it and we are doing what we can do to bring that about. But it is simply unfair to people to imply that this will be done by a magic wand. There is no magic wand. Alec Rowley. I do believe, President Officer, that it's not as difficult as what Mr Russell is setting out, given that the, the STUC, Unison and the GMB and Unite are all supportive of this. But in speaking with Gary Smith for the GMB yesterday, the clear point he was making to me was that what we have to address as an emergency is the fact that there are care workers up and down Scotland who are terrified to be tested because they don't want to be then told that they have to isolate and as a result of that rely on the statutory sick pay. So that is, a, is an emergency that must be addressed now, but if there was some kind of indication from the government that they were going to address the whole issue of care, because that's what needs to happen, but I know that there's a care home in Kirkcaldy that has recently said 14 people died within that directly related to COVID. I know that there's a, the death rate runs into the 20s with people that have died, and we will have to see what the final outcome of this will actually be. So I do believe that there will need to be some kind of inquiry once we get through the worst of this to find out what on earth went so badly wrong and the Care Commission will have to answer that. And that's why I would urge you to, uh, urge you to rethink the position that Jackie Bailey is saying, because it is not just that, that so many people have died, it is that people are at risk in these care homes, and we need to step up the action that needs to be taken. But in, out of respect for those workers, I do believe that the government needs to signal that they're going to do something and do something very quickly to address the fact that these workers have been treated in such an unfair way. Every MSP in here surely recognises that that is the case. 
even though they thought the Conservative Party would support a united front in here to say that we need to get in place a system, a national system of national bargaining and negotiating that gives all care workers in Scotland, regardless of who employs them, the same terms and conditions and the same wages. They can be treating exactly the same person. Surely the minister, the, the, the government will accept that and at least give a commitment to address that and to address that as a priority, an emergency.